Hello and thank you for watching my video. This is another in the series looking at new PvP builds in Guild Wars 2 after the June uh, traits and skill update and today we're going to be looking at the Guardian. Now this is actually a variant on the Mediguard which was very very successful towards the uh, towards the previous 2-3 uh, months and it's a little bit different uh, obviously we've got the, the extra trait line coming in but the majority is pretty same. I, I'd still call this a Mediguard. There is the downside, you can get spiked pretty uh, quickly if you don't have some of your shield and defences uh, up. But in a 1v1 situation, it's very, very useful indeed. So let's talk about the trait, the, the build first. We go sword, uh, focus with hammer. Now the hammer is pr uh, primarily used to trap your foes, and when you're in close combat, really use uh, mighty blow. It's an extremely useful skill to stun and knock your foe away. Uh, sorry, Banish, I apologise. Banish is the one you smash away your foe. Uh, and obviously we've got uh, Shield of Wrath that is very, very good to block attacks. We also have the block with Shelter. And then we have our Meditations, Contemplation of Purity, Smite Condition, Judge's Intervention and Renewed Focus. And I'm going to go through each one and tell you why these are pretty damn good at the moment. Um, so let's talk about quickly going to the uh, sigils. Sigil of uh, uh, fire and force basically get uh, you know the uh, flame blast and also you know that extra flap five percent damage. Again, same five percent damage and a lightning strike uh, sigil of air on the hammer. We have rune of the eagle. It can be interchanged. This is a rune that uh, really, if you want to go into, if we look at uh, for example um, the rune of the eagle, if we go for power runes. The Rune of the Eagle, uh, sorry, it's not in the Rune of the, it's not power, it's, um, where are you going? Uh, sort by category. We are in Ferocity. I'm not, I am, uh, Precision, there we go, finally found it. Uh, you can go with a few other ones, you could go with, uh, well you don't really want to go with Rune of the Ranger because you don't have an active companion. Uh, you could potentially go there, but the Rune of the Thief, you don't, ha you don't really want to be doing condition damage on this build, this isn't what it's about. So for, we're going for trying to get as many critical hits as possible. And if you look at that, our critical hit damage is 216% uh, of uh, additional damage that we can do um, when we're critical. So this is one of those builds that really does focus a lot on those critical hits. So if you do get a lot of weakness, fortunately we have a lot of condition damage remo condition removal. So let's talk about the traits. We have Valor, Radiance and Honor. Valor, gain Aegis when you're struck below 50%. Uh, we actually, when you cure a condition nearby and damage nearby foes, you smite conditions. So you get this when you actually heal. So this here is actually a also pretty much a smite condition. So you've got two smite conditions on your build here. So smite conditions when using when you use a healing ability, it's a refresh recharge of 16 seconds. Obviously, our heat shelter recharges every 30 seconds. So smiter's boon is tacked onto shelter as well. Uh, we could go with Strength of the Fallen, but we've got plenty of condition removal. And we we could take game protection when we use focus ability. But I think when the fact we use Shield of Wrath, we don't really need to have uh, focus mastery as well. Virtue of Courage is recharged when you ri revive an ally or, uh, ally or when you rally. So Virtue of Courage is the uh, Aegis one. Um, we could go for strength in numbers, but I, we're not really a uh, support guardian in this uh, build, so we're not going to take that. We have the ability to grant Aegis to allies when we do block an attack, um, but we don't. And the reason we don't take the top ones is because we don't have a shield. We gain might when we block attack, so that's why this is really useful. The Shield of Wrath and Shelter both give us the option to block attacks and gain might. And using a meditation skill heals you and grants fury to allies in a radius, and they also have reduced recharge. Since we're a Mediguard, that is the only one we want to take. So let's move on to Radiance. We actually have Virtue of Justice. Uh, you actually blind people when you activate it. This I will come on to later in some of the PvP matches and show you why that is so crucial. Because if you look there, we can pop that and it gets us uh, the opponent three blindness, uh, three second blindness. Critical hit chance with one handed weapon, so being that sword, we're getting that extra critical hit damage. Uh, we don't really want to take anything else. Uh, renewed uh, Virtue of Justice, so obviously that's recharged every time you kill somebody. And striking an enemy with Justice's active effect triggers Signet of Wrath. So we, by hitting it with that active effect, uh, you actually trigger and it, or you immobilize your target. I believe that's correct anyway. Um, 
because I know a couple of these traits aren't working correctly. Uh, we don't intend to have as much too much retaliation, so we're not going to use uh, retribution. Um, we actually get uh, attacks against burning foes have an increased chance to critically hit. So when we do pop that, we burn them and we get that extra critical hit chance. And burning damage is increased. Uh, the reason I haven't taken the other two is because I didn't think it is the worst of a bad bunch really for me for this build. So that, that the Grandmaster trait isn't too great, but uh, we do that increased burning damage. It just adds that little bit of pressure. So we're going bigger when we del de deliver a critical hit. This means we can dodge around a lot more. And this is when we're uh, reviving. We actually create a shield of absorption. Uh, we could take Invigorating Bulwark, but uh, it's only with Mace, and we could we don't take Falling Damage. The end of your dodge roll heals nearby allies. You and nearby allies gain Might when you land a critical hit, so every time we crit, we actually gain Might. And Aegis heals when it blocks an attack, that could be it's pretty low healing, uh, and but we don't have a Staff. Your Virtue of Resolve pass effects, uh, Passive Effect also regenerates Endurance. So there we go, we actually, the passive effect is regenerating our dodging round, so we don't, we're trying not to pop that as, unless you have to. You can see there, 15% endurance regeneration under the Virtue of Resolve uh, passive there. And then uh, the final one, sorry if we come back here, uh, you have increased vitality, the difference is when you look at your health there, 14, 6, 4, 5, that drops by 3,000 health and that is extremely useful. So that's why I've decided to take that. Instead of, we don't have symbols, and we're not really bothering with shouts. So that's what we take with all the traits. So, let's talk about what the skills are useful for. So we have a couple of blocks here. We have Shield of Wrath and Shelter, so they are enabling us to prevent the opponent from striking us. We have two main Condi removals. We have Contemplation of Fury, which actually obviously gives us Fury, converts conditions into boons, and that is a huge one against particularly Necromancers who will try and pass off their conditions to us. We can then convert them back into boons. Uh, Smite Condition. So if we are in close proximity, this is where it actually use, it's going to be in, useful in conjunction with something else. Uh, skill with Judge's Intervention here. Cure a condition and damage nearby foes. More damage if a condition is cured. So if we are suffering from conditions, again, perfect for a Necromancer, we can use uh, Judge's tele uh, Intervention to teleport to them, burn them, and then qu uh, give them significant damage. We also have Fury, so we are likely to critical hit them as well. And we can really do a lot more damage. So that's why this is pretty useful indeed. And meditation, obviously, all these meditations are giving you fury, giving that extra chance to critical hit. So let's go and talk about and show you some of the gameplay mechanics of us in game. Okay, so you can see I'm up against the Mesmer here. And the Mesmer's a pretty tricky one. I, I, I got off the uh, the hammer, smashed the mighty blow, knocked him away. Um, we've got a couple of, we've got bleeding going on. We'll use our shelter so you can see that we've actually got a lot of might stacks coming up. We've got fury. Um, every time he keeps giving me uh, confusion, I'll hit, uh, uh, convert that condition into a boon. So I've got vigor. I'm dodging around here. He's really low on health. Uh, and he's actually going to retreat. He'll pop this uh, portal, which eventually he will reuse. And what I'll do, I'll skip forward. So we've got it here. I'm watching uh, for the portal. And you'll see him. He jumps out of the portal, and I'm ready for him. It's one of those tricky situations where do you, you know, if I'd run off, he would have captured the point. So it's a clever play, for, play ploy from the Mesmers, but he's uh, running away anyway. He's not really involved, wanting to fight me. Uh, and we'll go and chase after him. So we've got uh, this is a, a five another five odd minute match. And you can see there that um, I'll use my skill 2 to try and teleport. And then I've got skills, uh, well, the C skill on my keybinds to actually close in. He actually gets a lot of uh, damage on me. I'm smiting the condition. And again, I convert all those conditions that were on me, which was given to me by the Necromancer to my left. Uh, I converted them into boons. You can see all the boons I've got going. The Mesmer's down. We're doing critical hit damage to the uh, Necromancer. We've, uh, we've used all our uh, virtues. And I think it's time to recharge. We blinded uh, the, ne the Necromancer there. And I'm going to recharge. He's tr getting causing no damage. And we're doing a lot of damage with our skill 3, which is a really, really, really impressive one. Um, Zealot's Defense. And there we go. We actually have killed the Necromancer. So we're getting some regeneration from uh, Ranger. We'll use skill 2 again to teleport. And again, uh, the Judge's Intervation, or the... Uh, into the other teleport we got going and the element of this is down we got another one down as well so both the, the rangers down as well 
and what I'll do, I'll pop my shield and get off the, the stomp there. That's one of the good things about this build is that there are several ways to actually make sure you get the stomp because you can either block, which really you only have skill 5 for on the focus, or you can actually blind them, and that's where the F1, which, uh, from, sorry, the, that's where the Virtue of Justice comes in. So there we go, we teleported and we're against this Mesmer again. He really doesn't like me. Um, again, we popped off one of our content removals. He did down me. Uh, I did have a lot of vulnerability there. Um, unfortunately, he popped his uh, block too, too late. Uh, one of my colleagues is coming in to res me up. So that's why I'm talking about the spike uh, damage is pretty high on this uh, against the, the Guardian. So fortunately we were able to get a lot of damage off on him. You can see here we critically hit, hit him with Sword of Wrath. Uh, and now he's down. So here we go. We, we've also we've, uh, used our healing skill to give us might and regenerate you know, and uh, give us fury. So we're going to go proceed back into mid. And what we want to be doing will be going in with the attack. You go in with skill 2 because you teleport in and then you unload with skill 3. So here we go. We're going to use teleport. So we've got two, skill 2, unload with skill 3, causing a lot of damage. Elemental is down by 50% health. And we're trying to really finish him off. He's popped his blocks. He's got a good heal going, um, causing me several damage. Uh, he's got giving me a few conditions. I'm popping my Condi removal. So he's down. We've got a uh, Necromancer on the top. I'm going to use skill 2 to get up there, or uh, so that we'll try and get up there, can't actually hit him. So we use skill 2 to teleport up to the top, and we're really taking it to the Necromancer. And this, this is going to be a good battle here. So you'll see here, I've um, actually got Torment on me. Uh, i got a couple more conditions. I'm waiting to see if I get any more conditions. But no, he's trying to escape, but failing. And I've popped my Virtue, so I'm going to be able to regenerate them. So there we go, I've got, popped the uh, uh, Condi removal. So he's struggling a little bit. Bear in mind, this is me fairly new to this build, so I, I haven't perfected the gameplay. He stopped me from hit getting off the uh, skill 5, that uh, you know CC skill. But um, with my sword damage, I'm doing a lot, a lot of damage to him. And he's trying to get... He's got a lot of conditions. He's got that fear. He, the spectral wall that I makes me... Can't, it keeps fearing me. Um, but again, I'm doing a lot of damage. I've got that teleport, so I can close the gap very, very quickly. Again, br uh, cleaving him down. And he's got some protection going, which means he negated some of my damage. But there we go. I'll pop the skill two, uh, skill six. I hit F1, so that's blinded him, and he's dead. That blind stopped him from getting off the uh, the fearing me away. So there we go. That's me against the Necromancer. Pretty uh, solid uh, uh, fight, really. I probably, if I if I was a better guardian, I would have been able to do that a lot better. Um, trying to get my ranger to stay in position. So we've got another Necro down there. He's worried about coming up to fight me. So here we go. We're going to come up and fight me here. But again, if you want to watch, you've got several ways to prevent your enemy from doing damage. And that's what's good about this build. So here we go. We're against the um, Necromancer again. He's not dis deciding not to engage me. So here we go. We've got the burn off. Uh, that shield explosion did a lot of damage. Look at all those. The, uh, the Condies. I used the teleport and then smite condition to do a lot of damage onto him. You can see the, the damage that we're doing, all a lot of little critical hits. He's got a very big, powerful um, uh, spectral uh, Death Shroud build, so I want to try and block a lot of his attacks and dodge them. Uh, again, look at my my actual endurance is max. Again, I use Smite Condition. Didn't quite, wasn't quite in range for, to actually damage him there, but he's doing a lot of damage to me, but I'm be able to regenerate it. I'll use some blocks here so he can't uh, attack me, so you can see some of the damage he tried to do but failed. And we're doing a lot of damage again. Our Shield of Wrath uh, did a lot of damage. And Zealot's Defense has finished him off. And we pop F1 and uh, there we go. That's him dead. Uh, and that is um, me in action for the, this uh, particular build. I hope you find this uh, fairly interesting. This is just a, a, build, a Guardian build that I found useful and works in PvP. Please feel free to leave any comments in the section below. And I will see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.